Hey everybody, it's me, Trask Nari. We're back with more Let's Play Trilby's Notes. The last left off, we just touched that painting. And, hmm, there's a piece of paper. Take paper. <coughs> it was a paper from a religious book I wasn't familiar with. I enclose it here with these notes. Victim 5, the child. Ah uh, yes, if you watched my other videos, you'll know what this says. The fifth man who desired judgment was the child, whose father held the carving of the slave. The prince came to him and was at once rightly pleased with what he found, for the house of the child and his father already knew well the name of the king. And as the prince watched, the child was thrown down by his father and broken with the wood of the prince's soul. But as the child's body, mind, and soul began to drift apart, the prince held them together, and he said, You are the child, and to you I grant power, for I see in you the potential that will grant my father, the king, his greatest wish. You shall, not, you shall be not of the land of technology, nor the realm of magic, but be of both, and thus you shall form the bridge. And across the bridge shall the king shall come into this message, Ah, shall come to bring his message to the men of technology. Through you, child, the bridge will come, and thus I name you the bridge keeper. And the prince touched the child, and he was the bridge keeper. And his three aspects were granted power, so that the soul would join with the prince's soul in the wood of the tree. And the bridge keeper rose up and threw down his father, and threw down his brother, and truly did they know the name of the king. And into the house of the father went the body and mind of the bridge keeper. Okay. Fun, 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 fun. Look, table. The reception desk was a cheap pine affair and unadorned papers and materials. So I appeared to have left a matchbox. Take matchbox. Only one match less left. I took it anyway, because I'm a douchebag. Hmm. Let's take this time to explore the hotel. Hmm, 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 hmm. And yes, I am just showcasing the hotel right now. Open door. Open door. Breaking into a room with someone I didn't know. Open door. Door was locked. Open door. Door was locked. Hmm. Fire detector. Use match on smoke detector. Use match on detector. There we go. What the fuck? Hmm. That was interesting. Fire escape opened because of that. Pushed my way through the door and descended the fire escape. Hmm. What's this? Take crowbar? I took the crowbar with me. Perhaps it could serve a purpose. Gordon Freeman for the win! Ha 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 ha. Whoa. Climb a ladder. Climb back through the ladder and enter the same floor I had come from. <laughs> now, we need to get into that uh, convention hall. Because, after all, that's where the chisel is. If anybody was paying attention to what the creepy uh, professor guy was saying, the convention hall he said was by the dining room, which is here. So let's try opening the door. Open door. Locked by a deadbolt on the other side. Hmm. That is very interesting. Uh oh. We're back in the realm. Hmm. Let's go back over here. It feeds. Hey, there are boards over the store now. Use crowbar on boards. Hmm. The crowbar is bent into uselessness. Okay. That would be a good time to take that pill. I took another pill. Open door. Here we are. There's the chisel. And, it, and yes, that chair was the chair from the lounge where we stayed. Touch chisel. A loud buzzing noise played in my ears, and my vision began to cloud as I reached over and laid my hand upon the tool. Somewhere in the Atlantic, July 25th, AD 1789. 
Mobuta had been a great warrior. In battle, his skill was thought unmatched in all of Africa. He had a, he had had a respect, a great house, and a slew of beautiful women, children to make any father proud. But but through just one mistake, it had all been torn away. His mistake was standing in his beloved king when the invaders from the coastal kingdom arrived. Now his great house was ruined, his women raped, and his children murdered. And for Mobuta, the worst fate of all, sold to the white men in exchange for weapons, shackled with his fellows to the hold of a slave ship, Mobuta was strong. Perhaps he could have lived as a slave, but then came the sickness. A simple fever, no doubt to be gone the next day, but the white men took no chances and threw him overboard. For days, Mobuta drifted, waiting for the black cloud of death to descend. Having lost everything, he's now sought only the embrace of the deep, a welcome end to a life betrayed. But the end did not come then. Uh, coming around, Captain. Voices, unfamiliar, speaking in unfamiliar language. Babuta was suddenly terrified that the slayers must have returned. But he was weak as a newborn and could not move or speak. Looks like we picked him up just in time. Don't know how much longer he'd been drifting out here. But it kind of lasted much longer. Good lord. Look upon it, men. The greatest evidence of what of humanity's inherent evil. Never forget that, men. Sailors. Yes, you or I did this. Let this poor wretch to die. The sailors aren't sailors like you or I, Captain. No. No, I do not know how those devils can have the audacity to kill so so call themselves human. Ugh. Today, there is no pride in being an Englishman. Find our new passenger some quarters. Make him comfortable. Passenger? Captain? Every innocent who sets foot on this ship is a free man. Is this something you find about this questionable? Yeah, bullshit. You're no uh, white guy in the 1700s would act like that. Not all, Captain. No, these were not the slavers. The ship was different, less crowded with terrified black faces. There was anger in the voices of the white man, but not directed at Mabuta. Still fragile, but so it restored, Mabuta passed out. Days passed and Mabuta's health was restored. To have been rescued by the ship of these good white men has been a fantastic stroke of good fortune. He decided that it had been the will of the gods that he should survive, and that proper things should be in order. An idol, that was the answer. If he could just find some suitable wood and a sharp blade, he would carve the finest idol of his life. Yeah, looking good, Mabuta. Point at chisel. All right, there, laddie. Oh, I say, you want some? You want something to carve with? Yeah. The sailor handed Mabuta a sharp, almost brand new workman's chisel. Just bring it back when you'll finish with it. And no, I will not stab him in the face. Despite how fun that might have been, we're gonna do what we're supposed to do. Climb down the ladder. Carve idol. With the chisel and the wood in the crate, Mobuta could finally create his offering. After several hours, Mobuta was finally pleased with this result. A fine rendition of his kingdom's god of fertility and good fortune. All that remained was now to return the chisel. Okay. Uh, I know it's a short video, but we're going to call it a break right here. Um, actually, you know what? Nah, I think we can fit it in. Climb ladder. Oh, Shiza. Ow. Dude, that's not necessary. He's already dead. Um. What? Help. No, bad. Bad. Ah, uh, uh. The vision faded, and I felt myself being hurled forcefully back into the present day. That tall, thin creature, that black-clad ghoul, what was the significance of my predicament? Why did it appear again and again throughout the history to spend death in horror? There was no connection to the idol's shape or Mabuta's tribal deities. The tall man was no fertility god. It must have been connected to the wood of that crate somehow. There had been a name that crate Mabuta hadn't been able to read it, but I looked through his eyes had O'Malley Shipping. Could the owner have been an ancestor of Sayobhan? It's a flimsy possibility, but at this point it was my only lead. I resolved to discuss this with Sayobhan at the earliest opportunity. Hmm, another paper. And this is where we'll end it. Next time on Trilby's Notes, we continue our search for the answer to the Defoe mystery. See you